Welcome to Evergreen Community Children's Church. I just want to say hi and thank you to everyone who's joining me today. And I want to remind you that wherever you are, whenever you're watching, uh, you are at church. And so the first thing you do when you come to church is what? You pray. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today. We lift up all of our hopes and our dreams, all of our difficulties and burdens. Uh, we lift up the things that bring us joy and the things that are frustrating us and making us feel bad. We come before you and put all of them at your feet because we know, Lord, that you will take care of them, that you would help us to uh, uh, go through all of the things that need to be gone through and that you would be lifted up and glorified in everything that we are. We come before you and put our trust in you because, Lord, we need to trust you. We come before you and ask for your grace so that we can honor you and lift up all of these things and praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. All right, so uh, we are praising right now. So uh, when you're at home, just sing along together with us. Uh, this is a song that we've been singing in uh, our Sunday school. So we haven't sung it before on, uh, online, but let's try singing it together. And uh, again, it's always a pleasure to sing with you guys. Uh, thanks for praising together with us and uh, singing along with the praise song. I am always uh, encouraged whenever we praise together and I look forward to when we can do it in person. Um, today our message is from Exodus chapter 2 verse 11 through chapter 4 verse 17 and its title is Our Confidence Comes From God. That's what we have to remember that when we uh, seek to do God's will we have to have confidence, but the confidence doesn't come from ourselves. It doesn't come from our own abilities. It doesn't come from our own, um, you know, our, our own talents or our own good thinking about ourselves. That's not how that works. Our confidence has to come from God. And like uh, I, I, I give a, a message every week, 
and I have to have confidence that I can give a good message. But the confidence doesn't come because I, I learned a lot of stuff in school, that I learned uh, how to do all the stuff with like Bible uh, interpretation and then how to make a sermon. And all that stuff, that stuff doesn't mean anything unless I have confidence in the way that God is going to work through me. Okay? It, it's really hard sometimes for me to like give a message um, because I don't like the way I sound, I don't like the things that I do, and all sorts of stuff, right? But it's not that, uh, that's not important because what I have to remember is that my confidence that I can do any of these things because God wants me to do them. My confidence comes from God. And this is something that, uh, that Moses had to learn because what happened was he grew up in, uh, in Pharaoh's household. He, became, he, was the, he was one of the princes of Egypt, right? He had all of these wonderful privileges, but he also knew that he was a Hebrew person. And he thought, oh, of course, I'm a Hebrew person and I'm a prince of Egypt, and now I can help all the Hebrews. And so he thought about it, and one day he saw... Uh, a Hebrew person being beaten, or one of those Hebrew slaves being beaten by an Egyptian. And the Egyptian was hurting him, and he got angry, and then he went and he hurt the Egyptian so badly that he died. And the other person, the Hebrew, he looked, and he was afraid, and he ran away. And so uh, he was like, oh my goodness. Uh, so he hid the body, and then a, a couple days later, what happened was that he saw two Israelites Two Hebrews are fighting each other, having an argument. And, then, and so he says, hey, you two shouldn't be fighting each other. And then one of them yells at him and says, hey, you, are you, are, are you going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian? And then Moses realized what he did. He knew that everyone knows all the, thing, you know, the, the things that he did, and, and he had to run away because um, he, um, he committed murder. Right? And so that's kind of what happens when you... When you kind of try and take it into your own hands, you can end up hurting other people. You're not depending on God. You're depending on yourself. You think, I can do it. I can take care of everything. But we can't. We can't take care of everything. And Moses knew that. right? And today we're going to talk about the story of the burning bush. And most of you know it, but some of you don't. So we'll just listen in, be care uh, and then carefully listen in, and we're going to learn something about what happened in Moses' life and how God used it to make him know that he's not just somebody who has to learn a bunch of different things, but he has to be a certain way. That he, his heart has to, uh, to, to follow God and trust him 100% and be humble. Because Moses had a lot of talents. He was smart. He was able to do a lot of different things. We know this because later on in his life, he did them all. But if we're smart and then we're all these other things and, uh, and very talented, uh, people tend to be very proud of themselves. Moses couldn't be proud of himself. God didn't want a servant who would be like that. God doesn't want us to be like that. Okay? So um, the first idea here is that part of God's plan is to prepare us to do his plan. And sometimes that means like we have to learn stuff, that we, we have to be able to do things, we have to learn how to sing, we have to learn how to uh, play instruments, we have to learn how to give a sermon, we have to learn how to serve, we have to learn how to study. All these different things God will use for His plan. But the most important thing for us to learn, for us to, to be prepared with, is to learn how to depend on God. Is to know that anything that we have doesn't come from us, it comes from God. And that's what happened with Moses. See, when he ran away, he gave up, right? He, uh, and, uh, and he, he was afraid, you know, he, he was ran away because he was afraid. And then I think he gave up. You know, he's like, uh, you know, that's it. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't need to do this thing. I realize that I'm not the person who's going to save all the Israelites. And that, that, was, that was what was in his mind, okay? And what happened was that he ran away to, uh, to Sinai Peninsula, and he met uh, a family led by a man named uh, Jethro, right? And Jethro, he and Jethro became really good friends. And, uh, you know, they came really close. And uh, Jethro had many daughters. And he married one, Moses married one of uh, Jethro's daughters, Zipporah. And he had children. And that's, that's where he was living. And he lived there not just a couple years, but many years. And he was, uh, you know, he worked for his father-in-law. Uh, they had, uh, their family had sheep. Uh, and, uh, and he would be the shepherd and take care of the sheep and do all these different things. He would take care of a whole bunch of things. And uh, what happened was that, you know, he became good at it. Yeah? And he thought, 
this is my life now. This is, this is I, I, I messed things up really bad. I committed murder. I have to run away. And uh, now this is my life. And sometimes we do that too, right? We, we sometimes think, oh yeah, um, I did something horrible. I, I, I can't do God's work. But no, no, no. God was getting him ready, right? God get, it was getting Moses ready. Not only did he learn how to do all sorts of things in the house of the Pharaoh, but now he's learning to be patient. He's learning to be loving. He's learning to take care of sheep. And, uh, you know, God uses people who take care of sheep a lot. I mean, think of King David, right? He taught him how to be a king by letting him take care of sheep. And uh, so that's what he did. He would, uh, he would go out every day. He would take care of the sheep. He would uh, take care of his family, do all sorts of different things. He did that day after day, month after month, year after year. Right? And he kind of gave up. See, this is our second point here, that Moses gave up. But God doesn't give up. God never gives up. And God is going to surprise Moses with something, something amazing. So what happened was that he was, uh, one day he was out and he was uh, taking care of the sheep. And then all of a sudden, on the mountain... He was right next to Mount Horeb. He looks up and he sees a bush that's on fire. Right? But it's not just any bush. Right? And it's not just any fire. He's looking at it closely and he's like, you know, it's, it's fire, so he's trying to stay away from it. But he's looking at it closely and he sees like, oh my goodness, it's on fire, but it's not burning up. That's what the Bible says. So he saw it, it was on fire, but it wasn't burning up. So he's like, I got to see this. This is weird. Right? So he got his curiosity. So he, ran, he runs up there. And he gets really close, and he looks at it, and he realizes that this is not natural. And all of a sudden, God speaks to him and talks to him and tells him that, uh, you know, first of all, you got to take off your shoes, right? Take your shoes off, and then I need to talk to you. So that's what he did. He took off his shoes, and he started talking to God. And God's like, I know what's going on with the Israelites in Egypt, and I'm going to save them. And then Moses is like, oh, thank you. Finally, somebody needs to save those people. And then God's like, it's going to be you. And uh, Moses is like, no way. There's no way. Come on, God. I mean, I screwed up so badly. I screwed up so badly. Why do you want me to do it again? Well, it's because he's still part of God's plan. And God's plan is better than man's plan. See? So what was happening was that Moses had his own plan before. And he thought he could do something and maybe get a, maybe a revolution or maybe like, uh, like, like, you know, riot or something like that, right? And hurt a whole bunch of Egyptian people and run away with all of the Israelites. I don't know what he was thinking, but he had a plan on his own or maybe he didn't have a plan on his own. But God's plan is way better than Moses' plan. And God told Moses about his plan. He's like, you know, and, and Moses is just giving excuses after excuses. He's like, come on, God, there's no way. You don't want me to do it. I screwed up so badly last time. And, and God's like, no, no, no. What I want you to do, all this, all the stuff that you did, you know, to mess up and all those different things that you did, that's all in preparation for what's happening now. Because right now, your attitude is the attitude I want. Your attitude is the one that I need so that you will listen to me. That's what God is telling Moses. Okay? And God's plan is better than man's plan. He kept talking to him and reminding him of all the things that, that he wants to do and reminding him that Moses, that is his destiny to save his people. And, uh, you know, Moses asked him a bunch of different things and he, God showed him a bunch of other stuff. It's really, it's really an interesting passage. You better read it. You should read it. I'm not going to read it out here, but this is kind of what the story is, okay? And then he reminds Moses that he is the God of uh, Abraham, of, of Isaac, of Jacob, right? He's, he's a, a God of all of the people who came before him, and he's going to save his people, and he's going to use Moses. And Moses decided, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it. I will obey God, and I will uh, do the thing that he asked me to do. And that's what happened. He went and he went to Egypt and he followed the things that God said and he did his very best. He humbled himself. He didn't come back as a conqueror. He didn't come back as a former prince. Uh, he, he went back to, 
to Egypt as God's man, as God's servant. And that's what we, when we serve God, that's how we serve God. We don't come back, we don't go to, we don't go uh, serve God as just us. We don't go serve God as like uh, super Mr. J, uh, knows a whole bunch of different things, can sing, do, and dance. I don't dance. <laughs> uh, and, and all sorts of stuff. But you know, I come to God as his servant. And whenever he wants me to do something, I will try and do my best to do it. And that's what Moses did too. Okay? And uh, he learned, while he was doing all of the things that he did, he learned to trust in God. Every time something happened, it was not easy. We're going to find out later. It's not easy. It wasn't easy. Talking to Pharaoh wasn't easy. Talking to the Israelites wasn't easy. You know, because all sorts of hardships came left and right and left and right. And when we serve God, it's never going to be easy. So Moses had to remember that he had to focus on what God wants and trust in God every step of the way because it wasn't just going to be, you know, it wasn't just going to be like, oh yeah, all done. Show up and get it done. No, that's not how that works. You know, anybody who serves God knows that uh, it's, it's every day, it's difficult, hard, and we work hard, right? And then what's the point, right? But the point is we are serving God, and God gives us joy when we do that. So there's more than, than we can imagine when we think about serving God. But Moses learned how to trust God, okay? Let's talk about today's verse. Our today's verse is from Jeremiah 17, verse 7. Okay. And I'll, I'll read that. It's in the NIV. Jeremiah 17, 7. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. Jeremiah 17, 7. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in Him. When we have confidence in God, God blesses us. Right? And our confidence should not be in ourselves. God gives us so many talents to do so many awesome things, but that's not what we should be proud of. What we should be proud of is the fact that we get to do God's work, and God picked us that we get a chance to participate together with God. That's what we should be joyful about. Well, we shouldn't even be proud of that either because, I mean, you know, that's all of our job to seek after Him and do the things that He wants us to do. Okay. Let's pray, and then uh, we'll, con we'll, we'll close our time. Heavenly Father, I thank you again for uh, the time that we're able to share together. And I ask, Lord, that you would really help us to seek after you and honor you. We know, Lord, that we can't understand everything. Um, we don't want to try. But we also know that uh, you will show us things one, time, one at a time, one thing after another. And we know, Lord, that we don't want to trust in ourselves or in our own talent or in our own ability because we're just going to say that it's all us. But help us, Lord, to depend on you, to depend on everything that you give to us. We pray, Lord, that we would not be discouraged when things are difficult because, Lord, things are always hard. And when we try to serve you, sometimes there are going to be people who are going to fight us and who are going to keep against us. But we pray, Lord, that you would help us to have mercy and love, and that we would be able to trust in you every step of the way, and that we would keep working harder. And that also, as we, would, as we continue serving, that we would see the joy that you give to us every step of the way. Because you do give us joy, amazing joy. It's great, it's awesome, it's powerful. It's better joy than I can get on my own, doing my own things. And that's why I want to serve you. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help us to see that every day in all the things that we do and that you would be lifted up and glorified in all of our work. We lift up these things and praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I love you all. I miss you. I'm praying for all of you. I'm going to see you very soon when we can worship together again. All right. Bye-bye.